we know the last day of bread. So we know their exact due date because in all pigs and all sows are gilts, both of those are females, um, they have a 115 day gestation length or pregnancy length. So today is 114 days for these two girls. And the reason we induce them is a couple of things. One, we want to make sure the babies don't get too big. Um, two, I want to be here. So I want to have an attended farrowing. So I want to make sure that these girls are going to be here with them. I'm a veterinarian. I'm Dr. Sonia. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm going to be here to attend it so I can make sure the babies don't get squished. I can make sure they get under the lights to be warm because they need to be 98 degrees as soon as they come out. They need to be, you know, dried off. Usually they pop out and they jump up and run around, but sometimes they don't. And I want to be here for that. If the sow gets in trouble and stops having babies, then I need to be here for that as well. So we induce for those reasons. Um, you don't have to induce. Most of the time they will have babies, no problem. A lot of the things that I see in the show pit world and the backyard farmer is that they overfeed the sows in late gestation. So those last two weeks of pregnancy for a pig, they are doing nothing but growing babies bigger, kind of like women. You know, at the last the pregnancy, that's when these babies really start chunking up and putting on the pounds. And that's a problem for pigs because if they get too big, they're not going to come out easily. And then if one gets stuck, the ones behind it are going to die. And we've got a whole litter to get out of there. So I want to make sure that I'm here and, I, and that I'm taking them, that I'm getting them out. And if she gets in trouble, I'm here for her. And if, um, the, hopefully they're not too big. So we, because we've moderated their feed intake over the last two weeks to make sure they're not just growing giant babies. So a normal piglet should be two to four pounds when it's born, depending on the size of the sow. These are, um, these are four, four fifty, probably that one behind is 500 pounds. Um, and they have two pound to four pound babies. So if you get up to five pound, but they're carrying 10 of them. Okay, so that's, you know, 50 pounds of, of piglet if you're in five pound range and they're getting too big. So we want them to, to have smaller piglets so we want we don't want to let them go over for that reason now the other thing is you don't want to induce if you do not absolutely know your breeding dates okay i've had a sow that went 121 days and i knew her breeding date but she just wasn't showing me any signs that she was really big and ready to have babies but she finally farrowed and she was a week late i don't know why um nature does its own thing sometimes so how do we induce a sow or a guilt? I'm going to show you three products. One, three. This is the only approved product. So when we're discussing food animals, we have to worry about approval because the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, um, regulates these products because they want to make sure that there's no, no drug residue left in the pig. So. When you eat something, um, meat, it doesn't have any drug residue in it because we have all these super strict guidelines. So even if they do get something, it's going to be gone by the time it goes to the meat world. Um, this is lutalice. It is a prostaglandin. It's a synthetic prostaglandin um, that will cause the, it's a luteolytic, it's lutalice. So it lyses the CL on the ovary that's maintaining the pregnancy. Um, at some point, the uterus kind of takes over some hormones, but this will cause induction of farrowing. And if you give it too early, then you're going to have dead baby pigs because they're not going to be mature enough. So you have to be super sure of your breeding date. Um, so this is 5 milligrams per mil, and the dose that we need is 10 milligrams. So this will be a 2 milliliter injection. Now it says it's for intramuscular use in cattle, swine, and mares. I kind of go off label with this. That's the only a thing a vet can do is go off label with a drug. Um, I'll go in the vulva with it. Actually, the vulva will get really large whenever they're close. And so that gives me a good spot to give it and I don't have to stab them in the neck and they really don't mind. And I can use a teeny tiny needle instead of a big giant one because their hide is tough. There's a reason they use pig skin to make footballs, right? So that's the only approved drug. And you have to use two milliliters of that. Now, they make another one that's chloprostanil that's called Estramate. And that is uh, 
kind of a comparative, use the same in cows as Lutilize, it is only approved for beef and dairy cattle. So your veterinarian can use this off-label, you cannot as a producer, but your veterinarian can use this off-label. Um, it's kind of the same, but again, you have to contact um, your vet and make sure that's okay. This is a new product we just got, whoop, where's the front of it? That's called Lutilize High Con. So it's the same thing as this, but it's one and a half times stronger. Or actually two and a half times stronger, I guess, because this is five mg per mil. This is 12 and a half mg per mil. So whereas I would give two mils of this, I can give 0.8 mils of this. But again, this is only approved for cattle. So because it's new, we haven't approved it and all those things, and it has to go through a bunch of FDA testing. So I'm going to show you what I get to use instead of a giant syringe and needle. So make sure when you're using, and a lot of producers do this, I'll see them pull out dirty syringes and needles. Please don't do that. If you use a syringe and needle, throw it away. If you're giving multiple injections, at least use a new needle. You don't have to use a new syringe unless you get blood or something in it, but please use a new needle, okay, on farms. Because they're figuring they're all the same, they're not. Because one can get something, and if you're using the same needle, you're going to spread it. Okay? So, I can use, instead of a big, thick needle, I can use a 20-gauge needle, which is what I would use to give a dog an injection. So, it's a little needle, or what they use in people. Um, and this is a 3 mil syringe, so I could use 2 mils of the Lutilize, or I can use, again, only on a veterinarian's recommendation, 0.8 of the loot high con because it's the same thing it's just a lower more concentrated dose but again we haven't done the research to get withdrawal times so your veterinarian has to call a certain place to make sure they have a, an, a perfect um, withdrawal time so we don't get in trouble for that now i'm going to show you i'm not going to do it because they're going to probably fuss they never do but if i do it on the video they're going to fuss um i'll show you in a second but so here's her baby Okay, and her bulb is right here. And I'll just clean it with some alcohol and put her right here, just in the skin, under the skin, and the vulva, and give it to her. It's a tiny little bit, so she really won't care at all. And I'm gonna give her a treat while I do it, because I take good care of my pigs. Um, now, when is, when is this gonna make it happen? If I give them a shot, is it gonna happen right now? No. So this takes some time because again, we're affecting hormones and that doesn't just happen instantaneously. It does with some things, but not with this. So normally what I get is 18 to 24 to 28 hours from time of shot till they actually have their first piglet. Now they'll go into pre-labor, they'll kind of lay down, they'll cramp, they'll start to make milk. That's a very good way to tell how close your sow is. They don't start to, to lactate until 24 hours before having a baby. So when, um, when you're worried about how close are they, always just check milk. We check milk several times a day and you'll get just a tiny drop because they're not milking like cows they're milking like sows but as soon as they start making that milk that means all those hormones are working and we're about to have babies um so normally the two the last two that i induced um that i kept records of went at 24 hours and 26 hours till the first piglet was born now before that you're going to have a whole phase of nesting and the sow, and they're in these crates. Let me explain to you how a sow crate works. This is a safe zone for babies because when this 450 pound mama lays down, we need a place to those babies to get away. So it has these little fingers right here. So if that mama, she'll get up against the wall and lay down. So if she gets up against this wall and goes to lay down, those babies can roll out and get away from her because. I promise you when this 400, 500 pound mama lays on a two or three pound baby, it's dead, okay? And people are like, well, isn't it cruel to put them in these crates? No, not at all. Is it cruel for us to put humans on bed rest so they don't hurt their babies or lose their babies? Same thing, okay? So they have plenty of room to move around. They can get up and lay down. They can walk back and forth. They cannot turn around. But again, we don't want them to be able to turn around because then they can squish a baby. So there's a, a, a bar in the back to keep them from going all the way back because they would run back and squish a baby. Um, in the front, there's nothing because they don't, they're, they're not going to squish them if they're right there by them. They're going to see them. Um, but on the sides and in the back, we've got the safety zone and we'll put heat lamps there 
Okay, so here's a heat lamp right here, and we'll drop that down tonight um, because I'm going to do some at 1 o'clock, 1.30, and then tomorrow about, well, we'll check them first thing in the morning, and then we'll start watching, and I'll expect babies about noon, not before lunch tomorrow, because that's about how these girls have been doing for me. And if you keep track of each cell, it helps to know because they all respond correctly. I think that's about it. So I will make another video tomorrow and I'll update you on exact hours after injection to labor, um, when they start nesting, when they start actually passing fluid. So they'll pass fluid a good bit before they get the first baby out. And that first baby is usually small, um, usually the third or fourth or the biggest ones. So if they get the, if they stick on the first one, I'm worried. Okay, because they just keep getting bigger. That first one is usually a smaller one. Um, but you have to get the first one out before you can go in. I don't recommend going in unless you have to. And people kind of get overzealous in that and they want to pull babies out. But it tears up the south uterus. So I want to let her do it as natural as possible. And we'll explain some things tomorrow that are indicators that there's a problem. Um, and I'll show you some pig pullers and some cleanliness issues because we don't want her to have a metritis or a uterine infection after she's calved, because I'm calved, sorry, full, uh, calved, full, farrowed. <laughs> I've got horses, cows, pigs, chickens, goats, you name it. Um, so we want to make sure we don't infect her and we want to make sure she has as clean and natural a birth as possible because that's going to be her best outcome. And we'll talk about some things to do um, after they farrow because a lot of times they get constipated. So we'll give them a lot of fruit. I try to give them a lot of fruit, a lot of fiber um, to get them a lot of water because they get kind of feverish when they're giving birth and that's just normal. So we want to keep them well hydrated and a lot of good fiber fruit um, diet so they can start pooping. Because as soon as they start passing feces after they give birth, they really feel a whole lot better because everything's kind of working again. So anyway, I'll update you tomorrow.